Welcome to the China Briefing. The content of the briefing includes Xi Jinping's high tech push steals the spotlight at China's two sessions. China ready to let some troubled property firms go bust, housing minister. Philippines' new playbook is a threat to South China Sea peace. Good progress on Chinese trade barriers, says Australia Trade Minister. Will memes about politicians now get Sri Lankans thrown in jail? Xi Jinping's high tech push steals the spotlight at China's two sessions. South China Morning Post. China's biggest political gathering of the year, the annual sessions of the National People's Congress, NPC, and the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference, CPPCC, has focused on President Xi Jinping's push for homegrown technology. She has called on Chinese scientists and military representatives to enhance the country's strategic capabilities in emerging areas, urging them to integrate high-tech developments into their work. The comments are seen as the most prominent policy direction to come out of the two sessions so far, as Premier Li Qiong has scaled back his office's role in diplomacy and public discourse. China ready to let some troubled property firms go bust, housing minister. South China Morning Post. China's housing minister, N.I. Hong, has said that Beijing will aim to stabilize the country's property market while allowing some troubled developers to go bankrupt or be restructured. China's property sector has been grappling with a liquidity crisis since mid-2021, with major developers defaulting on or delaying debt payments following a regulatory crackdown on high leverage. N.I. also said that to deal with a funding crunch in the sector, his ministry and the National Financial Regulatory Administration unveiled a plan in January to establish a mechanism to better coordinate with financial institutions to help real estate projects. Philippines' new playbook is a threat to South China Sea peace. South China Morning Post The Philippines is using a new playbook for the South China Sea, following China and Vietnam by subsidizing its fishermen to be at the forefront of grey zone operations at sea. At the same time, Manila is adopting an assertive transparency strategy, increasing exposure and even creating opportunities for accidents that Beijing accuses it of staging to gain more international attention and sympathy. Manila's new approaches are due to the significant disparity in maritime law enforcement and naval power between the Philippines and China. Good progress on Chinese trade barriers, says Australia Trade Minister. Nikkei Asia China will complete its review of tariffs on Australian wine by the end of March and is also reviewing its restrictions on lobster imports, according to Australian Trade Minister Don Farrell. He expressed hope that China would lift the tariffs, which can be as high as 218%, once the review is finished. The review process is expected to be completed by the end of March. Farrell also stated that good progress is being made in relation to the unofficial restrictions on lobster imports. However, if China does not remove the tariffs after the review, Australia will not hesitate to resume a World Trade Organization suit against them. China has been gradually lifting trade barriers on a range of commodities, including barley, wine, coal, and lobsters, that were put in place in late 2020 amid an escalating dispute over foreign investment and security. The wine tariffs and unofficial lobster restrictions are among the few barriers that remain in place. Will memes about politicians now get Sri Lankans thrown in jail? New York Times Activists and rights groups in Sri Lanka are concerned about a new law, the Online Safety Act, that gives the government wide-ranging powers to deem speech on social media to be prohibited statements. The law allows a committee appointed by the president to rule on what is prohibited, with violations potentially resulting in fines or imprisonment. While the government claims the law is necessary to combat online fraud, the spread of false information, and the abuse of women and children, critics argue that it could be used to stifle political dissent and restrict freedom of speech. Similar laws have already been implemented in other countries in the region, such as Bangladesh. As mainland China seeks more Taiwanese money, why aren't more listening? South China Morning Post. Shakesing. A city in China's Xijiang province has held a four day networking event aimed at attracting Taiwanese investors to the local software sector. The event, which attracted around 100 Taiwanese business people, 
is part of China's ongoing efforts to integrate Taiwan economically. However, analysts have said that these efforts will only have a significant impact on firms that already have relationships with China. While many Taiwanese investors have existing operations in China, the number of investors has not increased or decreased significantly over the past few years. The Taiwanese investors in attendance at the Shaxing event already have factories in China and were looking to expand. China's efforts to attract Taiwanese investment are expected to increase this year, with a particular focus on integrating the two sides. China views Taiwan as part of its territory and has said it will use force to reunite the two if necessary. Hong Kong energy giant CLP takes the nuclear option to hit decarbonization goals. South China Morning Post CLP Holdings, Hong Kong's second largest power supplier, plans to import more nuclear power from the mainland in a bid to reduce its greenhouse gas emissions by 2030. The utility company is looking to increase its share of clean energy and is exploring alternative sources from China's Guangdong province. CLP Holdings has also revealed plans to increase its renewable energy asset portfolio in mainland China and India. Chinese researchers hope to create real AI scientists. South China Morning Post Chinese researchers have developed a new framework that combines prior knowledge with data to train machine learning models. The framework aims to create informed machine learning models that can incorporate knowledge of physical laws and mathematical logic into their output. The researchers believe that by embedding human knowledge into AI models, they can improve their efficiency and ability to make inferences, making them more useful in science and engineering. The team hopes to further develop the framework to allow AI to identify its own knowledge and rules directly from data without human interference. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Dr. Six from the Sixth Dimension, bringing you the latest news from around the world. Today, we discussed President Xi Jinping's push for homegrown technology at China's two sessions, China's readiness to let troubled property firms go bust, the Philippines' new playbook in the South China Sea, the progress on Chinese trade barriers according to Australia's trade minister, concerns about a new law in Sri Lanka restricting freedom of speech, Mainland China's efforts to attract Taiwanese investors, Hong Kong energy giant CLP's plans for decarbonization, and Chinese researchers. Development of real AI scientists. Now, let's dive into these stories and analyze what they mean for the region and the world. President Xi Jinping's focus on homegrown technology at China's two sessions reflects China's determination to become a global technological powerhouse. By urging scientists and military representatives to integrate high-tech developments into their work, China is positioning itself to lead in emerging technologies. This push for self-reliance in technology is a significant policy direction that will shape China's future trajectory. China's decision to allow troubled property firms to go bankrupt or be restructured shows a shift in its approach to the property market. By stabilizing the market while allowing market forces to play out, China aims to address the liquidity crisis and promote sustainable growth in the sector. It's a bold move that demonstrates China's willingness to tackle economic challenges head-on. The Philippines' adoption of a new playbook in the South China Sea raises concerns about potential escalation in the region. By subsidizing its fishermen and employing an assertive transparency strategy, the Philippines is signaling its resolve to protect its interests in disputed waters. However, this approach also carries the risk of accidents and increased tensions with China. It's a delicate balancing act that could have far-reaching consequences for peace and stability in the region. Australia's trade minister's optimism about progress on Chinese trade barriers is a positive sign for bilateral relations. The completion of the review of tariffs on Australian wine by the end of March and the potential lifting of restrictions on lobster imports could signal a thaw in the trade dispute between the two countries. However, if China does not remove the tariffs, Australia is prepared to take further action. This ongoing trade issue highlights the importance of open dialogue and negotiation in resolving disputes. The introduction of a new law in Sri Lanka that restricts speech on social media raises concerns about freedom of expression and political dissent. While the government claims the law is aimed at combating online fraud and false information, critics argue it could be used to stifle dissent and curtail civil liberties. 
similar laws in neighboring countries have already raised alarms about the erosion of democratic values. It's a reminder of the delicate balance between security and individual rights in the digital age. China's efforts to attract Taiwanese investors highlight its desire to integrate Taiwan economically. However, these efforts may not have a significant impact on firms that already have relationships with China. The number of Taiwanese investors has remained relatively stable in recent years, suggesting that deeper integration may require more than just economic incentives. The Taiwan issue remains a complex and sensitive one, with China asserting its claim over the island. The path to closer economic ties between the two sides is fraught with challenges and political considerations. Hong Kong CLP Holdings plans to import more nuclear power from the mainland reflect its commitment to decarbonization. By increasing its share of clean energy and exploring alternative sources, CLP is taking steps to reduce its greenhouse gas emissions. This move aligns with global efforts to combat climate change and transition to a sustainable energy future. It's a positive development that demonstrates the private sector's role in driving environmental progress. Chinese researchers' development of a framework to create real AI scientists has the potential to revolutionize the field of artificial intelligence. By combining prior knowledge with data, AI models can incorporate physical laws and logical reasoning into their output. This could lead to more efficient and accurate AI models that have practical applications in science and engineering. The ongoing development of this framework represents an exciting frontier in AI research. In conclusion, the news today highlights China's focus on technology, its evolving approach to economic challenges, regional tensions in the South China Sea, progress in trade disputes, concerns about freedom of speech, the complexity of cross-strait relations, efforts towards decarbonization, and advancements in artificial intelligence. These stories underscore the dynamic nature of our world and the need for ongoing analysis and discussion. Now, I'd love to hear your thoughts. What do you make of these developments? Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6DO team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6DO brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6DO team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6DO brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website. 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6DO brief via email.